Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be learning about the Kruskal's algorithm. But wait, before starting this video, please go back and watch my video on disjoint set. It's a bit long video, but you'll get a lot of clarity about the concept that will be used in order to solve the Kruskal's algorithm. If you do not know disjoint set, you will not understand anything. I'm assuming you have seen my disjoint sets video and then I'll be teaching you Kruskal's algorithm uh, right before this video, whichever you'll find in the graph series is the Kruskal's uh, is the disjoint sets video. So what does Kruskal's algorithm help us to find? It tells us to find the minimum spanning tree. Now, what is a spanning tree? All of us know it. We have already discussed it in our previous lectures, right? So this is the given graph and you have to find the minimum spanning tree. We know we uh, can implement Prim's algorithm to find it and we have done it in the previous videos. But in this uh, video, we will be applying the Kruskal's algorithm in order to find the minimum spanning tree of this particular graph. What is the minimum spanning tree? If this graph can be represented in n nodes and n minus one edges such that you can reach from one node to every other node, that is what you call as minimum spanning tree. So you will be given a graph like this. You might be given the adjacency list. You might be given edges. You can be given anything. The first task that you need to do is sort all the edges. Remember this, sort all the edges according to weight. Very, very important. According to weight, you have to sort all the edges. So let's quickly write down all the edges and sort them according to weight. So once you have sorted all the edges, you'll find all the edges like this. And you see uh, the minimum weight at the front and then the it keeps on increasing. Okay. So you know the data structure disjoint set that we are going to use. What does disjoint set provide us with? It provides us uh, with two things. Find ultimate parent. And it also provides us with union by rank. And we know if two guys belong to the same component, they will always have the same ultimate parent or the boss, right? So remember, initially, when you declared the disjoint set with all these nodes, so over here we have six nodes. If you carefully observe, if you define a disjoint set with six nodes, everyone will be a single guy. Everyone will be a single guy with the parent pointing to themselves. So everyone is single with the parent pointing to themselves. So the first node is what you take. So let's quickly take the first node, which is saying one comma four. So you say, okay, one, four, who is your ultimate parent? One says one, four says four. So do they belong to the same component? No, they do not belong to the same component. So what you will do is you will go ahead and say, okay, since they do not belong to the same component, I can take it. And this will be part of my MST because this is the most minimal edge in the graph. So let's take it right. So I've taken it. Perfect. Next is one comma two. So you have a one and you have a two. So two's parent is himself and one is this component. Do they belong to the same component? Again, disjoint set will say you no, they do not belong to the same component. So you will go ahead and update one comma two with the edge. So this will also be a part of your MST. And you can also keep on counting the weight the weight will be one plus two because there are two edges which have been added. So this is done. Next is two comma three. This time there is two who will have an ultimate parent and there is three who will have an ultimate parent as three itself. If three has the ultimate parent as itself and two is here in this component. They definitely do not belong to the same component. So you can go ahead and add three. Yes, you can go ahead and add three into your MST as well. And that will be the edge weight. Perfect. This is also done, which is the next one. The next one is two comma four. Now this time when you try to find the ultimate parent of two and four, they will come out to be the same because they belong to a same component. So you'll be like, I will not take this into my MST because they're already connected. This will not make sense because you can all already reach everyone. Like every node can be reachable to every other node. So what's the point of making a cycle and introducing an extra edge? Because our goal is to find minimum. So including an extra edge will not help us, right? What's the next thing? One comma five. So one is here and five is a single guy. Again, they do not belong to the same component. Disjoint set will help you to find this. So go ahead and add this. 
perfect what's the next thing the next thing is three comma four so we have a three we have a four and they definitely belong to the same component this joint set will again help you to find this so you'll not add this because there's no point in adding this we'll go ahead and discard it next you have two comma six so you have a two over here and you have a six over here so six is alone and two is a part of this component so you can go ahead and say okay i'll take up six and that will be seven so by the way i forgot to write four and now seven yeah so this will be a part of it what's the next it's three comma six where is three where is six they belong to the same component so not to be taken what's the next four comma five so the four and five belong to the same component so again i will end up not taking it so apparently i can say this is this is my mst and the summation of weights will be one plus two three plus three six then 17 is the summation of weights very simple isn't it you just need to know disjoint set data structure and you can easily find mst from any given graph the weight as well as well as the mst got it so guys uh, i hope you have understood uh, the entire explanation of triskel's algorithm now it's time to code it up so as usual the c++ solution is on the right and the exact similar java code will be on the left for the java people so what are we given we're not given the edges we are rather given an adjacency list and remember it's an adjacency list so it will be containing the graphs uh, in bi-directional edges like if you look at the driver code as well they're basically taking the edge weight uvw and uh, they're basically storing it in two versions carefully see so since it is a bi-directional edge it will be stored in two ways so it's it's pretty simple uh no need to panic so since we are storing a tuple what you can do is you can say okay vector of pair this will be the weight and then i'll go ahead and store the two other nodes so this will be my edges where i'll be storing now i will be going across all the nodes yes i'll be going across all the nodes so let's it's a zero based indexing array so absolutely no problem so i'll be going across all the nodes right now in every node they are storing a vector which is basically storing the if you look at the driver's code again basically storing u and w basically the adjacent node and the weight so i can go ahead and say okay i'll go ahead with this adjacence of i and i can get the adjacent node which will be at the id of zero i'll get the weight which will be at id of one right and i know the node is nothing but the i correct i know the node is nothing but the i just in order to improve understanding i've written it so can i say edges yes. can i say edges maybe i'll just remove this it's clearing okay maybe i can say edges dot push back what should i say i say wait i know it's from node to adjacent node perfect now you might see but striver since it's a bi-directional edge you will insert this twice like if there is an edge between one to two with a weight of five then one at one there will be two comma five like on the adjacency list on one you will have two comma five and even at the place of two you will have if you remember the adjacency list, one comma five so you'll apparently insert two edges it is okay we're using disjoint set it will automatically discard it if you've taken one edge it will automatically discard the next edge right so it definitely goes ahead and adds twice this edge like one it will add, add as first time it will add as five comma one to two edge and then the second time it will add as five comma two comma one so it will definitely add twice but that is none of my concern because we are using a data structure which is going to ignore it so edges dot begin edges dot end right perfect we have sorted the edges now we need a data structure for sure but before that let's see what else we need we need to find the mst weight so maybe mst weight will be zero and we need to go across all the edges so let's quickly uh find the weight weight will be at id dot first and then we will have a u which will be id dot second dot first we will be having a v which will be uh v rather it dot second dot second and then going ahead we need to figure out if they belong to the same component or not this we will implement the data structure and if they belong to the like if they do not belong to the same data structure we will take the weight and add it if they would have asked us to store mst we can uh, we know the edges between u and v you can also store the mst but over here they just need the mst weight so i'll go ahead and return the mst 
weight. But now, how do you figure out if they are belonging to the same component or not? If you remember, we have already discussed something uh, like disjoint set data structure, and this was the snippet of code. So I'll just copy paste and I'll go to the solution. Yes, and I'll paste this class. So I have this disjoint set data structure already ready with us. So I'll go ahead and declare disjoint set ds with v vertices. Done. Now I'll say ds. Can you find the ultimate parent? Because this is the function. If you see, find ultimate parent. So I will be like, okay, cool. Can you find me the ultimate parent of u? If that's not equal to ds dot find ultimate parent of u, that means they belong to the different component. So I'll go ahead and take it to the MST. At the same time, I'll say you can use union by rank or union by size, whichever you wish to. You can go ahead and say union by size and you'll go u comma v. That's it. You make it a union. Simple as that. Now I'll go ahead and compile and see if it is running fine. Indeed it is. Now let's quickly uh, submit this and see if it is giving us correct answers or not. It is indeed running for all the test cases. Yes, it is. So now we've understood uh, most of the algorithm. What about the time complexity? First, uh, you're figuring out all the edges. So this is definitely going to take a big go of n plus the number of edges because you're going across, right? Then you are sorting it. Imagine you have m edges, so m logarithmic of n, m to sort it. And then you are moving across all the edges and you're using a disjoint set data structure, which we know is 4 cross alpha. So we can write it as m cross 4 cross alpha. And what uh, uh, external space am I using? This disjoint set data structure will be using a parent and a size. You can omit the rank because we are not using union by rank. But yeah, uh, we are using a parent and a size. That is the extra space. And we are using an extra space to store uh, edges as well. So we go of M over here. So these, uh, this is the time and the space complexity. I am using, if you carefully see, like 4 alpha is used twice. So probably another twice you can add because uh, this will be executed very limited number of times, like very, very rare case uh, where the find new parent and union by size will always be executed. So yeah, for safety, you can just add a cross to because it's twice. So this is what the time complexity and the space complexity of Truskell's algorithm is. So guys, before uh, wrapping up this video, I would like to request you something. I was checking out our statistics. Nearly 50% of the users who watch our video do not subscribe to us. So it's an earnest request that please hit that subscribe button. And if you understood the algorithm, the code and everything, do hit that like button. And if you haven't checked out our DP series and the SD sheet, the links will be in the description. Please make sure you check them out. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's put in some other video. Till then, bye bye. Take care.